All right. Um, today we're going to talk about module four and specifically the book of Hosea. So, um, module four deals with Jonah, Hosea, Habakkuk, Nahum, and Zephaniah. I'm not going to give you a super long lecture on these. I still want to keep it short. So I'm going to drill down on Hosea today. So, uh, we're going to be looking, uh, and kind of diving off from uh, Dr. Hearson's notes. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's talk about Hosea. And we're talking specifically about the date of Hosea's writing, uh, the book of Hosea. When was that written? Uh, the person Hosea prophesied during the reign of Jeroboam II, so sometime between 793 and 753 BC. Um, the Israelite kings northern Israelite kings that followed Jeroboam II are not mentioned in the preface of the book. So it's possible that the, um, the final editor or the, uh, the author who finished the work um, did not consider those to be important. Um, it's kind of a question in there. So, the person Hosea was a contemporary of Micah and Isaiah and one of the last prophets in the northern kingdom. Uh, Israel had become proud and apostate at this time. Uh, that's the northern kingdom of Israel. Uh, prosperity brought corruption among the people, the priests, and the leaders. And that, I think, is an interesting point that we need to remember. Prosperity brought corruption among the people, the priests, and the leaders. The next thing would be that Hosea, uh, while announcing doom, kind of this doom and gloom stuff, was really set to bring reconciliation and restoration um, and, and talk about how that was the purpose of punishment. Okay, So even though he's talking about some kind of not so nice uh, things, the purpose is that the, the, the punishment is going to bring them to reconciliation and restoration. Then uh, when we get down to Hosea and Gomer, this is on page two of his notes. Uh, we need to remember that this is not just an allegory. Um, Hosea actually married this woman uh, who was uh, an, an adulteress and, and a prostitute seems to be. Um, maybe a cultic prophet of Baal. We don't know. Um, but there is an analogy here. Remember, this is a real event, but it, it functions as an analogy of covenantal unfaithfulness. So God's not only the God of justice, Hosea presents a God as, presents our God as uh, someone who, is, who loves his people. And uh, there are children of unfaithfulness, uh, which have some symbolic names here. Uh, Jezreel. Uh, focus on the coming events in Jezreel, which would bring uh, the dynasty to an end. Uh, Lo Ruhama, no compassion, not loved. We need love these names. You know, don't name your kids stuff like this. Lo Ami, not my people. Uh, this is a rejection of the covenant. It's uh, it's it's rejecting the people. Uh, and then, as you move forward here, Hosea and his wife are tied. Uh, linked to, by analogy, God and his wife in 2.23, which is uh, the people of Israel. That's what we mean by God and his wife. Uh, we are not talking about um, an idea which has kind of hit prevalence lately, which is that, uh, i trying to remember, I believe it's the goddess uh, Astarte uh, in Babylon that uh, they think you know could have been the wife of God. Well, no, that's not what this is talking about. This is talking about his people. Okay, so he threatens to remove her her food and strip her bare as a way to shame an adulteress. Um, this would be taking the agricultural blessings of the people, which we see happen later, and uh, and then exile eventually would remove the people from Baal sites and make it impossible to worship Baal. So after that punishment, we see in 2.14 that God would seek out his people again. So there, there is a, a lot of analogy between what 
is going on here and what is going uh, in the story of the prophet and his wife, there's an analogy there between what's going on between God and his people. So that's, that's something we want to keep in mind here. And then as we move on down, I wanted to talk about on page six, the final section overview here. So Hosea uses this marriage allegory to point out the, cons- the constancy of God's love. It's a, it's a very different sort of um, application of God's love than we normally see. And, and it probably made people uncomfortable. Um, and so it's a daring allegory. Um, the focus of this prophecy is, is always on God and the abandoned one rather than being preoccupied with the backsliding people. So the focus here is to show the harm and the um, damage done to, to God um, by showing what's done to Hosea. Uh, and so that's the focus more so than Gomer or, or the people. Um, his imagery of marriage is incredibly bold. It carries ideas of duties and responsibilities tied to a relationship. And idolatry is also considered adultery to God. Um, a betrayed husband is required by law to send the wife away. That's why Hosea's imagery is so amazing. God's love uh, triumphs or, or, or goes further than what the law says. Uh, God's love for his people um, is bigger than the commands in the law. Ultimately, Hosea's central complaint against the people is that they don't know God. This signifies their covenant relationship. It is um, inner engagement and dedication or attachment to a person. If you love me, keep my commandments, is what Jesus said. Um, the prophets, in contrast to um, the historical narratives in the Old Testament, the prophets uh, consistently point out that to obey is better than sacrifice. Basically, that heart condition is, is the important thing, um, that outward expressions of obedience take a second place to the inner expression of of love and fidelity to God, uh, and that the outward expressions grow from that inward devotion to God. So uh, that's one of the things we see in Hosea. That's one of the things we see through uh, consistently through the minor prophets. Okay.